Oh, it was a long break. So sorry, everybody. Technical difficulties, all kinds of fun happened last week. But if you're watching this on YouTube, that means you missed the live stream. But right now we're live streaming. Everybody's saying hi to you. That's why they're saying hi to you on YouTube. And uh, so we're just doing Wheel of Cheese today. We've had some uh, techie fun things that are being worked out. So right now we're just doing Wheel of Cheese. If you're here, you're in it. If you're not, you're watching. You're at the behest on how this Wheel of Cheese lands. So are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let's get some Wheel of Cheese going here. Let's see what our first song is going to be. Ready? One, two, three. Speen. Mm-hmm. It is Asteroid Jason. How are you, Asteroid Jason? Are you still here? What's going on? Let's see what Asteroid Jason wants. Asteroid Jason would like a game, Sim City. And the name of the track is Clear Skyscrapers. Um, his message is SimCity was a city building game that released in 2013. Even though it was a reboot of a very influential series, it was not well received, but it does have some delightful minimalistic soundtrack. I am down for delightful minimalistic soundtrack. That could be a new trend. Instead of living like a minimalist, I'll write a book called Delightful Minimalistic Soundtrack. All right, let's do this. Are you guys ready? I'm excited. We finally get to get on with our, our little having fun. Let's go. All right. Well, this is nice. I like the little flute double stops. How about now? Can you hear a little better? I love the arpeggiation in the back that's bouncing around and dancing around. That really makes a difference in this. Nice arrangement building up here. really has that like busy building vibe I never played SimCity I didn't know what it's about but like hustling to build things and grow things and you know kind of vibe Kind of 
cautionary there. Nice dynamic change up there. There's a lot of the sprinkles of this very unique patterns. What's really fun about it is that that arpeggiated sequence that's a, an EDM sound with a delay is also what's giving it a little bit of a... Now, of course, I've heard of SimCity um, uh, many times. Obviously, I never played it, but um, I, I knew it was some kind of a builder, a building kind of game. Uh, but this track in of itself really did have that kind of hustle and bustle of a city growing and building vibe. I don't know where uh, Clear Skyscrapers is the name of this particular track. And I don't know where this plays in the game or if this game just has a series of really fun music like this as you're continually building and doing things. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, that's what it is, right? It's a, it's a sandbox kind of... Uh, it, would that be the right term? No, maybe not. Um... But that you're building things, and as you build things, you, you, you have to manage how it flows. Do you get an opportunity to go back, and if you made a mistake, you can clear it up and, and fix it again kind of stuff? Oh, so I used the right term. I got lucky. It's a sandbox city builder. Okay. But SimCity has been around for a real long time, hasn't it? Um, it, it, it seems like... It has in my memory. I've just seemed like I've heard it for a very... Oh, in the 90s. Yeah, okay. So that's when it became a big thing. Okay. Yeah, musically, though, this particular track, um, very percussive in its arrangements and playing around with syncopations, you know, odd timing uh, or an odd meter for the most part. But a lot of it was uh, these... For myself, I can only speak for myself, but what I hear here and I can recognize is that when these patterns are, are, um, are established in the composition using, let's say, somewhat of a muted uh, harp pluck, that's kind of close vibe to a pizzicato, but not. You assign these different sounds and stuff to fill in these very unique you know, things that are happening. And to me, what this score made me imagine were multiple little things happening in the game. Like maybe one arrangement was a, one part of the one part happening that was being built this way, while another thing might be happening here. I don't know. That's just me maybe going off in La La Land, not knowing what the game looks like, but very, very much 
build and build and build and build and celebrate. The, the orchestrative work of it was really super cool. Um, it sounded like there was some hybrid use. Obviously, there were some synth arpeggiations uh, happening in the background there, but there, were no, there was the horns, and there were the trills and stuff that were there. Of course, it could have been sample generated, but uh, it just sounded great. It was a great little buildy, buildy, like motivational. How about that? If I would have been, uh, if a publisher would have called me up and said, what would you make of this track? And if I was thinking as a library composer, I'd go, oh, this is very motivational. Starting off with just doing this and then the next cut's doing this. And so I don't know if you guys would agree with me or not, but yeah, that's my thing. All right, more wheelie of cheese, please. All right, more wheelie coming right up. Let's see what we got here. We are doing queso, uh, queso pobre the whole day. I don't, uh, we're not doing the new viewers ones. We're keeping it simple. And so uh, here we go. If you're just in the background and you're lurking and you haven't jumped into the wheel of cheese, don't be shame. Come on in, put in your song and we spin it and maybe it lands on you. Okay, guys, you ready? Here we go. Oh, that's lame. What the hell just happened there? Well, I'm going to let it roll because last time I did a rerun, everybody got all kind of special ed on me. Okay. Uh, so this one is Indy 120. Rigged. <laughs> Let's see what Indy 120 wants. I don't know. That could be my GPU doing its thing. I don't know. Too many things running. It's possible. Uh, let me look up here. Oh, my God. Oh, there you are. Lindy 120. A TV show. Uh, this has got Jazz Roots, and the name of this track is... Blue Tone, and the name of the show is Brain Powered by Yoko Kano, uh, one of our favorite composers here on the stream. Uh, sorry about the volume the way it was at the beginning. I reset it to where it is now, so hopefully it'll... Because that last track kind of snuck in on us. All right, guys, here we go. All right. Good old school single single Avia pad.
Yes, I do cognac. God, that pad is such an old... It reminds me of an old Korg module. This pad. What a beautiful track. I don't know when this... This was actually put up here uh, four years ago. I don't know when the uh, origi original uh, track was released and recorded. That's why I'm like, oh, man, God, I remember that pad. There was this really super high-end Korg module back in the day. I forgot what the, what the name of it was, but... Um, had beautiful moving ambient uh, layers in a single pad patch. And that's what it reminded me of. Something else, um, you know, I, somebody had said in the comments, it sounded like the sax was behind a wall or something like that. And um, it reminded me of, there was, um, before he passed away, there's a, a very famous jazz saxophone player named Stan Getz. And my uncle was, uh, co-producing and writing his last album, Pas Appassionado. And at the time, Stan had a beautiful house over Zuma Beach in Malibu, where I used to love to surf all the time. So I remember going to his house uh, because my uncle wanted to lay some piano tracks with him in practice. I said, oh, okay, I'll come over. And because there was no surf. <laughs> I wanted to go surfing. I didn't know. I, okay, it's flat. Yeah, I'll come by. And I, and I was in such awe on how Stan could actually get those kinds of dynamics and sounds out of the sax that sounded so unique and so beautiful. It almost felt like he could, like he was throwing his voice, you know, that sound of sax, you know, like he was just throwing it and stuff. And, and plus, well, at that particular time, you know, he was not feeling 100%. It was right before he passed away from cancer. And but the the, I, the the magic that wind instruments, let's say, is one thing with the dynamics. You guys heard me talk about how wonderful it is that an instrument that uses the very breath that keeps us alive. You know, I know that sounds a little woo woo, but, you know, to me, that's like insane. I could never do it because I, I had asthma. So I'd be like, do do do. Yeah, it wouldn't have never worked. Uh, but I was always at awe with that. And that kind of also the way there's that kind of um, legato kind of vibe with that kind of playing. It's just really super pretty, man. Super pretty. Uh, I don't think it was muted. I didn't hear it at being a key of weeps. <laughs> you see, I can laugh now without worrying about quado come out. But I still put my hand out of my stomach just out of, out, out of, out of habit. That's funny. Anyhow. That was a wonderful uh, listen. Let's go uh, more wheelie, more wheelie of cheese. Do 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 do. How how do you, how do you solo? Yeah, pretty much. I, at least, was that a question for me, or is that kind of you were making kind of a statement question thing? Let me refresh the window here. Okay. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. Whoops. All right. Ah. Is rhetorical. Thank you. My brain, I don't know. I'm in a very mellow mood today. All right, hopefully my GPU won't gas us. You guys ready? Let's see what we got. Let's go. Oh, it glitched right on the Cairo. Oh my goodness. There are 77 people in the house. We got it on Cairo. Hack. <laughs> <laughs> it's rigged. <laughs> yeah, look, Kyrie, everyone's leaning in on you, man. It's rigged, right? I know, right? I didn't do it. I swear to God, guys, there's something wrong with my GPU. Well, let's just, let's get past that. Let's see what Kyrie wants. <laughs> All right, Kyrie wants, um, let me see here. Oh, there you are. It's a game. Oh, we're going back to Kirby. Kirby, and we are going to be listening to 
Uh, this is the credits theme of Kirby's Superstar. And this is one of, uh, one of Kairu's favorite themes. Okay, you guys ready? Oh shit, I pressed the wrong button. Oh no. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Oh my god, I almost opened up a whole new... Whoops. Am I still here? Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. No, I, what I did is I, I opened up the whole... Like I started the stream loading thing again. We're back. I'm sorry, it's just that day. It's a Saturday. I should be out playing and we should all be out doing something else. Okay. Let me see if I did this right with the Kirby thing. And, um, oh my goodness, Snake, you would have died laughing. Ugh. Okay, let me get the buttons back the way I need it. Okay, this is it. Oh my goodness. Good thing I'm going to, okay, let's see if I copied it right for Kairu. All right, Kairu, you in the house? Ugh. I know. All right, here we go. Let's try this now. Let's go. There we go. Lonely snare. Kairu, what year was this theme? right there in front of me, you're right. changes. Nice and fun and hippie and peppy. Would this be 16-bit world? of a was this part of like an independent uh, console uh, like a Nintendo only type of console and was uh, was this in, in that 16k era that's still sound card generated right whatever it could still be processed on the internal sound card uh, something like that right oh okay so it was yeah you know why because um, you know obviously there's quite there's not such a big difference between the 8 and the 16. I think what happened with the 16 that I can decipher is it gave the composers like, okay, it's almost like having a few more tracks to work with, but exponentially having to really take more advantage of stereo imaging with delays and stuff. So it makes it really fun, especially when it comes to tracks that I've listened to that have a lot of bounce to it, like whatever's happening here, a lot of chase, a lot of bounce or something of that nature. So uh, let me read what Ginger's saying there. Okay, let me, see, let me get back to the music.
And the other thing is, is all, all the arpeggiations, I mean, you know, of the chord changes, is, I, I believe it's one, five, eight, you know, for musicians, right? And that makes it nice and fun, too. You leave those arpeggiations open, even though the, the core chord changes, you can get all the other little arpeggiations to fit in between and all the other arrangements as well. <laughs> Right here. It's like a B section. I think we're in repeat mode, right? Very Renaissance style uh, harmonies. Yeah, there was. It was subtle, but I saw, I heard it there definitely. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I think I think Snake or was it Turnip had said that um, if I A B eight bit versus sixteen bit that there would be a you know a significant difference in it and you're right there definitely would be I think um, without a doubt that um, from what I've learned from you guys that as these games that came out a little more into the nineties and these chips that you guys are talking about um, give gave more opportunity for the composers to kind of spread out their their arrangements and kind of layer more into it. I, I don't know what the maximum quote unquote tracks one was able to use, let's say during the eight bit days, uh, you know, the chip tune days, but um, of course they, to me, my very, my very first exposure to eight bit was uh, Mario brothers, you know, dun, 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 dun. But on more recent times, when you guys got me last year to play final fantasy seven original, you know, and how that could be just so addictive also. Those really super snappy, micro, flashy hooks in the music because you really had to get things going and all that. And I could see, Kairu, how this uh, being a very... I don't know anything about the game. I don't know how it works. I don't know what it's doing. But I the, uh, the patterns in there, the, mel the little melodies in there, especially when you're hearing it over and over and over again, while you're playing a game, I could see how this is, was a really super fun track and kind of stuck in your head, you know, uh, as, as a hook. So, oh, st ah, got a cramp, ow, on my foot. Okay, thanks, Kairu. More wheelie. Let's see, what do we got here for more wheelie? Okay, vote for your color. Let's see what we got here. Update the wheel. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, we're we gonna get it. Oh, into the blue by that much. So picturable, pick, pick terrible. And that was really close. Uh, so let's see what Pick Trouble would like. In the meantime, my usual announcement while I'm looking up uh, Pick Trouble's uh, name is that uh, if you're new here to the stream, you're lurking in the back and uh, want to, uh, if you win or you don't win, you come in here and you do the round of uh, the, the, the Wheel of Cheese, but you may have left, you want to see if you won the Wheel of Cheese, don't forget you can check on the YouTube channel because I always post these up there a little later. Oh, there it is. Okay wants a game called Hit Single Reel, FNF. Ooh, I don't know if I've done anything from this. Let's see what we got here. 
Uh, this is a song called Silly Billy. And the game is called FNF Hit Single Reel. Uh, it's a rap battle. Oh, okay. This is going to be interesting. Are you guys ready? Let's do a rap battle. All right. Two players play at the same time. It's a rhythm game. Rapping, the rapping sounds more riffy. Sounds like it could be metalcore, digi metalcore. super freaking clever um I, I think judgment kazi just sent a, a little message on this game is uh, is what was it base game the opportunity usually does part of the bridge and your character has to repeat it with something different so is this the kind of game where you're playing against a computer or other people like you have to have like a lobby of, of guests or can you play a computer kind of thing i think it's i think it's musically it's um i it, if if the instrumentation changed, it could be kind of, uh, kind of, I'd say symphonic metalcore-ish vibe-ish. I don't know why I'm getting that, you know, more than, I mean, I understand it's supposed to be rapping and stuff, but the vibe that I'm getting of the composer is, is, is a little more metal-ish than, than, than it is rap. Well, the bass is getting a beating out of this.
Okay, here's where I'm confused. I, I understand that this is a game. <coughs> I understand that you got to use the little arrows on here. <coughs> but is this particular piece of music, it says that this is a hit single. Was this just maybe a regenerated piece of music um, from the game itself? Or if I, am I actually watching gameplay? Because when I closed my eyes, I don't know if you saw me there for like 15 seconds. I had just closed my eyes. I didn't want to see anything. I was listening to the arrangements of it. And it sounded like... Um, as the composer, you know, had the samples he is, he was working with, you know, so that there was like, for instance, a lot of left, right hand stuff going around with the piano and stuff. But it, um, this, this to me seems like it's, it's, it's a track that was developed, but then at the same token, the precision of this video to the music, it's like as if I'm watching gameplay or a purposeful, um, you know, uh, let's say video game music video. Oh, it started to the song. Okay. It's great to watch the video and then being able to separate the back and forth. The answer, call answer. Super clever, man. Did he finish off in that major third? What a clever track, man! Absolutely clever. Um, yes, there was. I was. I was. I think it was. Who was it that set up earlier? That it. Uh, I think it was Judgment that was uh, talking about that they do have two distinct characteristic. Uh, diff differences like the little guy whose back is facing us his voices were a lot more brighter and top ended whereas the other guy the super cool guy holding the mic was a little more just a little more still had an edge to it but a little more rounder and bolder to it so you could you could discern the difference between the two. That's why I was kind of fascinated with watching the video, and at times I was more about watching the video than listening to the music on this. But I I have to look more into this. I have to definitely check this out, and because it's very interesting to me how that would work, the mechanics of that. You know, considering also that I'm just you know just a couple levels into Hi-Fi Rush, which is another uh, you know rhythm instrument. Um, what's it called? A rhythm game or something like that? Uh, but I like the music. The music was, is why we're here in the first place. And it was really creative and it, it had a lot more rock tones in it than anything else. But um, that, was, that was super badass. And uh, thank you for that suggestion. Oh, stand by. All right, let's go and we'll find some more wheelie. Oh no, I did it again. Oh, God. I hope not. Okay, good. I didn't. All right. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, picturable. That uh, that was it. Was a very unique suggestion. It was very eye opener for me. Oops, I did it again. I'm sorry. My bad. Okay. More wheelie. Are we ready, guys, for more wheelie? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Oops. I am having an issue. I think it was Cairo who had said that I've been out of it for about three weeks, so I'm making some mistakes here that are just bobo for beginners. All right, guys, let's try this again. Are you ready? Let's go. Who do we got? Who's coming in clutch? Uh-oh, I know who. <laughs> Lateral tap. Sorry, I need the peanut butter break. Let's see what lateral tap wants here. Lateral tap would like a band called Brainstorm. And the name of the track is, oh dude, I just blew it. Damn it, I hate when I do this. Uh, the name of the song is Nobody But You. The band is Brainstorm, and the message is uh, Brainstorm, uh, hailing from Rialto, California. Brainstorm is a trio consisting of brothers Kevin and Tony Martin with longtime friend Eric Hagstrom. Nobody But You is a 70s styled R&B soul song, soul song, <laughs> off of their newest album, Sounds Good. All right. Well, let's check this out then. <laughs> Let's go. Right there, just with the drums coming in, it felt 70s. Engineering everything. Even sounded like there was a little oversaturation or a little tape saturation on the on the master mix. Uh, the vocals, I love the sizzle on it, like Amon had said earlier. Uh, but what I liked about the sizzle is it wasn't a through and through, which means that it sounded like it had a threshold to sizzle. Because uh, when the vocalist was not uh, singing a, a little bit more with volume, it's as if, if it, it didn't, uh, the threshold didn't get triggered to put the sizzle on it so you can hear a little cleaner parts of his voice as he got a little louder then the threshold uh it surpassed the threshold and kicked in some of the dirt 
the drum engineering to me once it, it I just the second it just the tom toms the, the way it opened up automatically I almost felt like I, I was going to be at the beginning of a brick house um, but that ta- but that that tone that's that kind of mono vibe there was just a hair of um, uh, ambience is not the word I'm looking for uh, early reflection little bit of, you can hear it in in like a little early refle- um uh in some stereo imaging on that uh, but the once again it almost sounded like there was like one mic <laughs> on, on on just in the middle maybe one in the ki- one in the kick at a distance and stuff really nice fun counter arrangements too the second i heard the track i felt like i should have done this reaction out at the beach it definitely had that full on beach summer vibe and everything so this was great apparently they just released this 3 months ago uh i don't know that's what it sounds it says here but um yeah this was such a, this is that kind of song too where also in my mind like if you're driving down like malibu at pch like fogs lifting and you're in impala <laughs> it just gives you big thick op striped shirts yeah summer 70s totally lateral oh by the way thank you very much lala i noticed you just uh dropped in a little burrato there thank you yeah, but totally summers. I swear, it, it felt like you, I, you guys, most of you guys are too young, but OP shirts had a series once of these thicker stripes, the OP surfwear stuff, and it reminded me of that, or, or days like you'd be seeing some of the old school skaters in the pool and stuff like that. Very nostalgic, great sound, but they apparently it's a newer track, so they definitely tipped their, hot, their hats very well at um, the nostalgic sound on it. It was really super good. Thanks for bringing it in the house. Vex, did you have some of those shirts? I had some of those, the, the old OPs and the old stubbies. You know, those are those the ones you had to have back then. Or the solid color OP long sleeve with the strip or the stripes just right across here, like across the sleeve and then across the chest and stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy, those are the days. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Hypercolor, yeah, it was that kind of vibe. More wheelie of cheese. Okay, I'm kind of on this diet right now, and I don't have my my coochie mints out like I normally do. I think I got. I think I told you guys that I went and I did my surgery and my post surgery. Let me hang on. Let me get this. Uh, okay, everyone. Okay, yeah, my post surgery. When I went into for some things. They say, "Hey, yeah, you're, you're." Um, let me boink. There you go. He goes, "You're healing really well, but uh, something's up with your blood pressure, bro. You're pushing a 140 over 88." I'm like, "What the hell does that mean?" And they go, "Yeah, we should have a conversation." So now I'm like fully eating cleaner foods and stuff, and trying to be more. You know, anybody who knows knows that's not a. It's not a fun blood pressure little thingy going on there. All right, guys, let's spin that wheel. Here we go. Yes, the skim cheese diet. Here we go. Who's up? Who's up? Oh, I know who this is. Are you here, Crossface Buffalo Wing? One of our usual suspects. Uh Uh-huh. Crossface Buffalo Wing would like for us to enjoy with him something from anime. Take it easy on yourself, Crossface. Okay. Crossface the Buffalo wants us to listen to a track called Shikaru Days by Shikabu. And the anime is my dear friend, Nokotan. And the little message that I have here is the opening theme sequence for the anime, my dear friend, Nokotan, by Shikanoko Nokonoko Koshitanimtan. Sorry. The anime is pure nonsense. <laughs> and I can't explain exactly what's going on in the episode to episode. But it does involve deer crackers. What? Involve deer crackers and all that. Okay. <laughs> All right then. We're doing this together, Crossface. Let's go. Do 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 do. 
There we go. Little pop, a uh, punk pop rock. Such a cartoon thing. like bell keyboard arrangements following this melody. It's really fun. Is that it? Oh, Bummerooski. I, I like that. That was really fun. I started getting into some of the arrangements, too. There was like a fully stereo imaged uh, rhythm guitar. You know, it's, it's, it's very Japanese anime sounding compositions that are so fun and so lighthearted. That's the thing that I've learned is that a lot of these composers can write these great tracks that seem like so, but then if you don't really know what the story's about, it could be really dark and macabre or something, you know? But um, uh, I like, the, once again, this is where this thing is like, where I always picture in my, my head if the producer's telling the singers, okay, everybody sing like you're a mouse, you know, or using that, that very small mouth tone, if it's a purp purposeful way of singing, opposed to perhaps that's the way people are, you know, um, speaking in that tone. But it, it's always fat. It, these are always fans. Uh, these these themes are always fast and catchy to get you, and that's what this was. It was kind of odd though. It was it was young girls and deers. It's like something that you might see on OnlyFans. I don't know. I just there's a lot of these things I don't understand. Sometimes when I watch some of these things, I'm going wait, what's going on here? I don't. I can't quite figure this out. I, I didn't mean any disrespect by saying that. Just to me, I'm like, Ur. I kind of put that together. I'm like, didn't know. You know, it's a comedy anime show. Oh, I see. Ah, okay. So do the deer in the anime show, are they, um, do they talk? Are they, are they actually part of the show? Because it's kind of a trip. <laughs> anime could be so much of anything that you want. It's unbelievable. It's just mind numbing. I still haven't, uh, you know, I don't know what those trends are. Um, wait. It's the one human dear girl does. Oh, dear God. Oh, okay. I gotcha. All right. I don't know. I'm learning. It's trippy stuff, man. Super heady. How about some more cheese, guys? More cheesy spiny. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, so the main character is a girl and a deer. So they're like buddies. Okay, gotcha. Okay, we're good. All right, here we go. Here's a little more uh, queso pobre. Okay, more people are participating here, so that's kind of cool. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, sorry, I, I fully faded. I swear to God, my eyes just crossed, and I was like, okay, here we go. Ready, spin. What do we got? Is it going to get into the blue? Into the blue we go. Okay, Evan, Evan Momo, Momo. Evan Mo, Evan Mo. Okay, let's see what Evan Mo would like. Evan Mo, the hot would like. 
Oops, I went right past it. Stand by. A band called Tricot. And let's see what we got here. If we got any special messages, since this will be the first time we're listening to this. So, uh, well, the only message he says is he loves this track. So he's wanting to share this with us. Uh, oh, I think we're getting a live performance, too. All right, guys, let's go. They've given us like four di different rhythmical statements so far in this track. That 
was really, really... Yes, thank you for clapping. Is that a new emoji I didn't hear or something? Whoops. That was really super, super slick playing and stuff. They gave us a whole array of rhythmical uh, adventures by changing it up. The, the voicings on the guitar were really slick. Definitely pushing the jazz fusion um, kind of patterns that were going on there, but, be, but being very eclectic also with the voice, voicings. Uh, the bass player was noodling the whole time. I mean, was still keeping down what she needed to, but was noodling around constantly around with the melody and stuff. And what's really unique for as much um, with the musicianship, drums, both guitar players, the bass and everything, uh, with that kind of composition, how subtle the vocal performance was. The vocal performance was just a matter of fact. And what I mean, what I mean by that is, is like, it's, uh, the, the performance was just... How do I say this? Like if Otto, A-D-O, is that the name of the artist, would have done this track, it would have been a complete, it could have been the same exact musician, uh, musicians playing, but her uh, performance would have been completely different. This one was just very, just threading all of those rhythmical changes and not getting too far out there, you know, and that the tone and the deliverables of the melody and how she was singing. Even when the background vocals came in, there was a couple times where I'm going, you know, it was the most subdued part of the song, even though I enjoyed the melody. I was having too much of a good time listening to, you know, what the musicians were doing, and they were just so clean. And I love the fact that the lead guitar player who was playing those unique voicings was also in charge of, you know, stomping on the pedals and doing some very eclectic ambient work as well, letting it ring out almost shoegazy. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm a little shoegazy. How you doing, eh? We'll go to Greenwich Village. We'll go get some shoegazy, yeah? I'm sorry. That just was stupid. And I'm allowed to do that because it's a Saturday. And I'm, I'm, today was, I'm just, it is what it is. Let's get some more cheese. Gabagool. <laughs> I'm glad you had a moment to come in here, Evan. I think this was your first time, too. You said aloha to us earlier, so thank you so much for coming by and hanging out. Everybody say hi to Evan. Uh, this was uh, the first win in the first Super Chat as well, so, or time in the chat saying how's it. So thanks for coming by, Evan. All right. Reflesh. And let's grab some more. And let's see what I got here. All right, what do we got? Okay, we keep speeding the cheese, speedy mean. Let's go. Let's get that cheese, which I can't eat anymore. I can't eat cheese right now. That's so it's a bummer. I gotta lose this 15 pounds, and I'll eat cheese. All right, here we go. Oh, didn't work. Wait, my cheese wheel's frozen. Uh oh, there we go. All right. Yeah, that's what it's about. I got to exercise more and I can't right now until I'm 100%. Check Zira! How are you, buddy? Look who's in the house. Are you still here? He's usually the first one to come in and say, How's it? Every time the stream pops up, he's like, Boom! Uh, so there he is. Yeah, woohoo is right for you, bro. So let's see what you want, my friend. One of our usual suspects here. It's always nice to have him in here. Sometimes he goes on a big, he'll make a run on the, uh, on the, the chat here. Make me laugh. Get into the conversation here. Uh, okay. This is a band called AFI. Um, and the name of the track is called, it's an alternative, Tied to a Tree. And um, no message, so we're going right to it. This is from Jack Zero. Thanks for coming out, bro, and hanging out and playing on the Wheel of Cheese. And play on the Wheel of Cheese. We shall speak the cheese. All right. Good. 
vibes on it, smashing pumpkins a little bit. I don't know why, but and and like pumpkin little radio head ish. Like this is radio head ish. I keep my head, I want to go. This is great. I love this part. This is great. This section here, I'm really digging. Second time. See how we would look in the dying lights. Where we used to be. This section, believe it or not, don't laugh at me. There's a little bit of a Duran Duran thing going on there. I can't tell if it's because of the mix or something. Yeah, it definitely. That's what I wanted to focus on right there is um, uh, I was going, what else am I hearing through this? And I was struggling for it. And so when it got into the more when the drums came in and they kind of pull back the vocals and really rinse it with a, you know, a good like plate reverb and stuff. I'm going, what does this sound like? And it does. It gave me that Duran Duran vibe a little bit. So because of my limited knowledge of bands and stuff, I go to the same 
series of artists and stuff. But I, I love the full, this track to me was a full vibe. That's why twice I had those mini jump scares. Because I was getting into these nice, long, chill, ethereal, ambient, you know, kind of chord changes. And also there were some fun things that were happening. I don't know if you guys picked up on. But there were some positional changes with the guitars that went on a couple times. Just engineering stuff. And the acoustic started over here. And then there was an abrupt shift in something and the acoustic dropped on this side. But not with the intention of the listener having some kind of left to right sweep. But it was just very unique. These unique little things that were happening that only I pick up because my brain is Swiss cheese as well. Uh, I love the guy's tone of his voice. And I did, like I said, there's a, there's a couple times it did have a little Smashing Pumpkins, a little bit of Radiohead, but it was truly AFI. Um, does anybody know what AFI stand for so I don't have to sound completely out of the loop? Or is that really the name of the band? This was a really super nice track, though. Jack Zero, thank you. I really appreciate it. A fire inside. Oh. How many have, uh, how many, uh, have they been around for a while? Cairo. I mean, they, I guess you have to be around for a while to, to have an acronym, right? People know you as, you know, something like that. Oh. Late 90s. Oh, okay. Do they do anything more any, now, Jack Zera, by any chance? Or if anybody knows, are they still a band now, or is this stuff this... I mean, this was posted three years ago, but I don't know if this was maybe something that was from the old catalog. Um, all right. Oh, this was their newest album. Okay, cool. I love the sound. I love the engineering. I love the space it put me in. That that's just as pure as I can get with with what I'm saying. You just put me in a great space. All right, more cheese. If you're lurking in the background, you don't know what this channel is about. Uh, we do. <laughs> I I really love watching Nick Nocturnal. He is really fun and he's clever. But I love his thing when he goes, "We do fun metal things." <laughs> he's so clever. I like him. He's a good guy. He's a good entertainer. He's really, I'm, I'm stoked for his success. But if you're new and you're lurking here, we uh, spin the wheel of cheese here. You for free, you just drop your name on the form there. You end up on this wheel of cheese. I'll show you what it looks like because we're going to do it again right now. And, um, and then I grab it off this list and then I drop it on there. And let me, let me refresh it. Here we go. And it could be any kind of music you want. Any kind of music, right, gang? All my usual suspects here. Classical, jazz. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a pianist playing, was it Rachmaninoff? Yeah, and we've had death metal. Uh, you name it, we have it. Let's do this. Are you ready? Let's spin. All right. Smelly Pants U00. Zero zero. Pelly or or maybe it's Smelly Pants Su. So. So I got Smelly Pants. I don't know. <laughs> Creative profile naming at its best. Alright, let's see what Smelly Pants wants. Who won a choice here on Smelly Cheese, Wheel of Cheese. So Smelly Pants wants anime. Oh, I recognize this one. The anime is Monster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the name of the track is The Seeds of Time. So, Smelly Pants, if you're in the house. If you don't want to drop by in the comments, thank you for hanging out in the Wheel of Cheese. And we're doing Smelly Pants' song because he's... Or she, I don't know. I'm thinking it might be a guy. But we're doing some smelly pants. Is it like smelly cat? Smelly cat. Here we go. Pantsu. Oh, is it ginger? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs>
the pulsing and the breathing. It's like an exhaustion. Very nice. When I say the music is breathing, it's got that, it's a dynamic, uh, uh, that kind of vibe. It's just kind of compressing in and out. Very pensive, like a slow build of things going on in here, but kind of... Kind of impending vibes. So it's kind of like a Frankenstein vibe, right? Judgment. I love this arrangement. It's like the sections, though. It's like a medium-sized section. I like the Davisi in the strings. It sounds like in the first, uh, first strings. Tell it to me, Obo. It's really important what the cellos are doing there. Would have loved to have seen this just seen. You know, watch this against whatever was happening there. Uh, there, was there was definitely like a brooding hunt, uh, hunt going on, it felt like. And halfway through the track is when something happened. It seemed like whereas maybe whoever was being the hunted finally either got caught or something like that and then gets maybe knocked out or something and then c wakes up slowly from whatever happens and finds that, uh, that he's tied up and he's, you know, whatever. Kind of a sad end to it uh, kind of vibe there. Um, so, uh, but I, but that, I want to go back to that breathing. Uh, Flip-flop, yes, it went well. Thank you so much for asking. I'm here. Um, that I, I do want to go back into that little thing that I said earlier about the, the, uh, the, the, the essence of the uh, arrangement breathing. Composers, we all that for those of us who write mu music and stuff like that, that is the that volume getting in uh, in tempo. So it's that kind of like to me, it felt like there was a little bit of a soft chase going on just by those dynamics getting louder and just kind of pulsating and stuff like that. And it was more of the lower end instrumentation of it. 
So to me, it was kind of like as if, if maybe in the scene, whoever was being chased was looking behind and had this kind of vibe to it. But that's what that kind of rhythmical pulsating, you know, in this particular arrangement made me feel like I was kind of uh, breathing in and out kind of vibe. So, yeah, that whole thing. <coughs> Silk Fox. Yes, I know you are. How are you? I hope you're doing well. More cheese, shall we? Please, more cheese. Let's serve up some more cheese. Stand by. Let me see what we got here, guys. If you're in for the big spin. Let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, smelly Pansu. Thank you very much, Smelly Pansu. So Pansu, I guess, is Japanese for that, right? Is that... <laughs> You know, obviously a fan, too, of that particular... Uh, I guess that was a MAGA, right? Um, uh, that pati oh. I said MAGA. Manga. Man manga. Manga. I'm sorry. No politics in the show. I'm not... And plus, I'm not political. I know nothing. <laughs> I, I stay away from it. I'm sorry. That's... Yeah. That's what I meant. Um, anime, right. Oh, anime. Okay. So that smelly pantsu was very much a... Uh, very much a fan of, of the uh, project, the anime. All right, here we go, guys. Let me uh, spin, a, spin us up another reel here. Let's see what we got. Let's see who wins. You guys ready? Oh, the wheel of cheese is getting thicker and thicker, guys. Listo, pobre queso. Oh, 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 greasy wheels. Do we get blue? Oh my goodness. This thing has got greasy gears. Okay, uh, let's see. Carvidosi. Carvidosi. Let's go. Car Corvid. Corvidosi. Uh, maybe there's something behind that. But let's see what Corvidosi wants. So. We are going to be listening to a TV show called, let's see, The Seven Universe, True Kind of Love, is that what it is? Yes. The Steven Universe, the movie, the song is True Kind of Love. Okay, with no further information or adieu. I wonder where that word ever came from. It's funny when people use it. I was going, do they even know what it really truly means? You know, when they go... Without further ado, sounds like it would be flinch. I don't know. I'll have to look it up one day and make a report of that. All right, guys, let's do this. All right. Oh, when a difficult day goes by, keeping it together is hard, but that's why you got to try. You got to try. thundering storm outside underneath the covers you huddle and hide open your eyes open your eyes <laughs> it's the truth it's the truth it's the truth kind of love it's the truth it's the truth Kind of a lean for and some old Marvin Gaye. I am better than men or There's a new direction that I like to choose. It's called the truth. It's called the truth. I love her voice too. Very subtle, and very buttery. You show me solvable problem. We can get the this out. It's 
track man such an easy listening piece of music um and apparently part of a soundtrack is it not steven universe it's a cartoon i don't understand it's cartoon network so is is this um obviously from cartoon network but what kind of a i know her voice was just beautiful just so soft and so buttery and, and just with a little bit of a smokiness in it too um, is that the name of, of, what's the name of this particular singer? I can't find that here. Anybody know what her name is? I love the arrangements too. The arrangements are very lighthearted and fun. A lot of space for, for her to really just, you know, cut loose. Estelle, is that her name? Is Estelle like her total name, kind of like Prince Estelle? And is she, I guess for her to do the song, she must be associated with the, with the Steven Universe show perhaps. Anyhow, very nice, very wide open. Had a lot of that '70s vibes. Really nice chord changes there, sticking to the key, sticking to the key where the minor chord changes were coming through. You know, just really nice voicings. Very nice and fluffy and lighthearted and very lovable. That's what I would say. Very lovable. Oh, she did something with Kanye. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, nonetheless, I thought it was a great track, and super mahalo for having us listen to it. Let's see what we got. How about some more cheese? I still want to do some more cheese. Ah, let me see here. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Refresh a little bit. I must refresh a bit. And let's see what we got here. Okay, you ready for cheese? Listo para queso? Queso pobre? Queso huevón? Lleva mil queso? <laughs> That's something my uncle would have said. Lleva mil queso, carajo. ¿Qué te parece, mano? ¿Cómo está? ¿Qué hace? Ma huele. All right, that was just a bunch of gibberish. Let's go. What do we got? Oh, I thought it was going to be a blue consumer. Oh! I think he must be off playing Destiny or he's sleeping right now. I don't know. Where is Snake? Snake, are you there? Wake up, Snake. Hello. He's sleeping. <laughs> Boy, well, that's okay. You know, I love having Snake in the house. Oh, thank you, Flip Flop. That was nice of you to say. I appreciate that. I'm back. All right, guys. Uh, we're, I, I don't know what Amit Snake's going to do. He's going to, you're going to have to send, someone's going to have to send him a, uh, a Discord message that I, that I legitimately landed on him. It wasn't fixed. It wasn't hexed. Okay, you guys, every time one of the mods, it lands on the mods, everyone goes, it's fixed. Yeah, let me see what I'm a snake wants. I'm a snake would like. Hey, wait a second. Oh, hang on for a second. I'm I'm having an issue with the form. Hang on. Got it together. All right, good. That was me. Okay. Are we ready for I'm a Snake song? I'm a Snake wants a movie. Unless, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Wait a second. I think this was, 
No, this is called uh, Test Test. Brand Digital Heritage with Unreal Engine. Oh, I know what he was doing. This doesn't count. Snake has to come in and give me a real one. You know what he was doing? He was testing the form. Yeah. <laughs> he was testing the form and trying to help us bug it out. That's hilarious. Maybe we should all react to this, you know, brand digital heritage with the Unreal Engine. Maybe that's one of his projects. No, I'm not going to put it up, but I thought that was great. <laughs> ah, I thought that was great. Too funny. All right, you know what that means. Respeen. Let's respeen. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I love our avocado people. All right, let's refresh and get some more cheese on the wheel. Yes, we'll definitely we'll definitely have to uh, let uh, Snake know that uh, he's he's he legitimately won a spin, and we're gonna have to honor that when he gets in. Okay, here we go. Some more people on the list. Uh, okay, is everybody ready? Let's go. You're not ready, Judgment? Come on. Uh-oh, Blue Conspiracy, Blue Conspiracy, Blue Conspiracy. Oh, here we go again. Oh, my goodness. Little Pam Panda. I, brah, I'm telling you, I don't know. Wasabi. What are you going to do? Okay, Little Pan Panda. Let's see what Little Pan Panda wants. Every time, I, every time Little Pan Panda comes by, I think of the Little Caesars um, pizza commercial when he ends with Pan Pan. Okay, Little Pan Panda, let's say standby. Little Pan Panda, ow. Urgh. Okay, Little Pan Panda wants something from Punishing Gray. All righty. And this one will be uh, it is called To Our Destiny. And this is Punishing Gray Raven. So are you guys ready for this? I'm down for it. I keep on getting these little pings in my chest. Something happens to me. Make sure you tell the police. Well, before he dropped dead, he was complaining about these pings in his chest. All right, here we go. Okay. Ba -bum. Some good Saturday vibes, you say? There's a little phase on that cello. It's kind of making me wonder.
Ooh, nice change out. I like this. You know, I love how this is building. Just for me, there's something about the smallness of the trap choice. It's leaving me a little naked. I love this. This is like dubstep drop. A dubstep drop section. Oh, thanks, little panda. Gives me a good idea of what it's about. You see, now this, this change it makes a hell of a lot more sense to me. In continuity. Big dubstep. But kind of has a metal drum cut beat vibe to it. Nice blend. It's unique because he's layered up his, his base. But this dubstep vibe right here is just fire. Sprinkle of a sequence. Oh, that was it? I was getting into it. I was ready to break one off in there and just kind of like start to get deep. Especially, I love that, that dubstep, cut, dubstep cut beat vibe of the track. Um, I did like the opening of it, you know, as my, even though I, I may have said that little thing about the kind of trap sound that the composer used at the beginning, kind of made, made it feel a little naked. A little later, a little later on, I can't talk, a little later on, I kind of understood it. Like, because I'm a fly in the wall when I listen to music with you guys, I have no idea what the intentions are of the composer and what the message or what the emotion that's going to be relayed through. <laughs> But probably about 25 seconds after I said that, I realized, God, you know what? 
What a great choice, the fact that the, you use that little thin EDM or, or, or trap sound because it gave a lot more space for that the vocals uh, to really be a little more impactful. I, I would say the padded and the vocal, uh, I can't talk, the pads and the vocals rang out differently had there been a more of a robust bottom end with that, you know, that trap and that kit kind of vibe, so... I thought it was great. I loved it. Very spacey. Nice little shifts, too. I, especially that, that metal cut time dubstep EDM kind of vibe. What was the name of this? this to Our Destiny? Pun oh, Punishing Grey Raven. Oh, Punishing is the game and Grey Raven. Well, I'm a little confused here. Is Grey Raven the name of the game and this particular thing is Punishing or is it Punishing Grey Raven 1 OST? Let me know. It's, oh, it's the name of the game. Okay, got it. All right, are you guys ready? Let's go. All right. It's going to be yellow. I smell it. Great Sage Sun. Are you here, Great Sage Sun? I know, right there. You were right on top of it. Okay, well, this is... It was not blue. All right, here we go. Let's see what the great sage sun wants here. <laughs> great sage sun would like a band called Dark Sarah. And this is mental. Metal. Uh, let's see what this is. This one is called Dance with the Dragon by Dark Sarah. And um, his message is, ever wanted a dark fantasy metal musical that is not just the Phantom of the Opera rendition? Probably not, but here it is anyway. <laughs> All right, great sage son. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know why you here Don't try to escape, my dear You've been naughty, I know By trying to steal something of my own I have no idea Why I have been dragged down here what you talking about Nice, this is great And so there's a reason to shout I saw the key and tried to steal I see What do we have here? Nothing Now I know why you here. You are a mischievous thief But if you want the key You need to earn it, my dear this is how we treat our guests who are trying to cheat. So you will be my red doll tonight, tonight at the dragon This is ginormous. I love this. It's got kind of, you know, the Nightwish vibe here at this point. Great guitar tone blended with that synth, real knifey synth vibe. My parents are watching. Are yeah, flip flop. That's like the neoclassical vibe as well. 
you know, too mental. Sorry, but I'm still I'm getting a little meatball vibes too. I don't know. I know that it's a bad deal. Production wise. Have <laughs> meatloaf, that's what I meant. God, I'm so done. Still some more, it looks like. Nope, that was it. Yeah, that was Meatball. No, I'm sorry. I'm such Bobo. I And you notice I said that with authority, too, because I, I didn't realize that I said Meatball. I was thinking Meatloaf. I was like, yeah, it reminds me of Meatball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I I don't know, guys. That's, that's, that's just over. Um, yeah, there was, I had a couple people talking about, uh, I am hungry, I'm dying right now. And I can only have a salad. I can eat like a rabbit while I'm on this new thing. Um, there are people talking about the influence uh, of classical music with rock. And there, there truly is. I mean, obviously, there's two master influences would be blues. Uh, and then, you know, stepping around, dancing around, that would be the progressive, you know, metal scenes. Uh, but there is a pretty influential... Um, I'd want to say nudge of classical certain composers uh, that are a lot more of the legendaries, the Bach, Beethoven, Chopin, Mozart's uh, kind of Brahms, and the powerful, you know, uh, suites or pieces of uh, symphonies that remind you of when these bands do it, reminds you of classical music. And hence, therefore, the neoclassical vibes, the Ingve Malmsteen, and all the rest of the folks that go in that direction, as well as the Nightwish. Dream theater esque kind of bands. Uh, you, you pull a lot from. If there's such a thing as classical basics, which which is pretty absurd to really actually say, <clears throat> in of itself, but uh, yeah, something like that. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether I can keep going on or not. I'm kind of draining right now. I gotta have my salad. I don't know. Let me see. How much do I have time here? How much have I been here? How long have I been here? Um, I can't tell. Stand by. Let me see. 
Two and a half hours. Oh, two and a half hours. And my hard drive says I've been recording for uh, almost two hours. Okay, you know what? I'm going to call it a day. And um, for those of you who have been hanging out uh, in the background, just haven't been playing, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that are back, it's good to be back. I'm sorry, last week was like, I'm back, and then pfft, all that shit, uh, all that stuff went down, and I got all shipwrecked and stuff. And we still have, thanks, Cool Joe, and we still have some things with the form that we're working out and stuff, but uh, I'm glad I was able to get some Wheel of Cheese. Once again, I want to rem remind those who might be still here of the donos that were left over. I'm going to do a separate offline reaction session like I did a couple weeks ago for you guys. So that'll also go on that YouTube. Um, <clears throat> yes, it'll go on that session for sure. Uh, so anyhow, thank you guys all for coming back. It's great to see everybody. Baja, rot Rotten, um, Sound, and Jerdman, and Truzokia, and Mason Gator, and... Casper the Friendly Spirit and Vex. Lisa's in here. Amon's been chilling out in the background. Ivy Creep as well. Shadow, good to see you again, bro. Well, I can't, you can see me, but I can't see you. All right. Crossface, we'll see Hurricane as well. Kairu. Jack Zira, thank you as usual. So, anyhow, yeah. Um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Oh, let me take these off. Ugh. Oh. Whew. All right, so I don't know exactly when I'm going to be back. Just keep an eye on your um, on your uh, notifications. Yeah, whoop. Do I have any sweat marks? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I could be just whatever. And uh, so have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I know for some of you it's already Sunday. For some of you it's just lurking into Saturday night. Remember, stay safe. Always count the wins. It could always be worse, believe it or not. <laughs> but at least when you're here for a couple of hours with us, it's all about the music, and that's all I care about. <laughs>